I'd like to thank first uh, Dr. Santosh Shakti and Dr. Manu Singhal for getting this program together in the event. I think uh, it's something that uh, I've been wanting to do for a while and then since uh, Dr. Singh Malhotra was coming to Mumbai, uh, we thought we'd have a nice session here at the hospital. Uh, I think uh, we will be in, in complex times. Uh, the last few years, there's, there's been a lot of stuff happening and I think, like, you know, medicine and science has been uh, evolving and things have been changing and I think we as a hospital here at KBH want to be number one, we want to be at the forefront of new, new information that's coming out uh, and really take, take steps to put us really, really at the top. So, uh, I think that's something that uh, uh, I uh, and really hosted the first session of this, these events. Uh, we, start, we call them New Horizons. They were with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough, who's another cardiologist from the US, and uh, Dr. Paul Barrick, who's one of the leading ICU doctors in the world. So, it was about a year and a half ago, and it was on uh, protocols and treatments for COVID 19. And at that time, there was a lot of Mixed information coming out on really what uh, what we could do to treat patients who suffer from uh, these symptoms and this disease, and uh, really there was a lot of suppression of early treatment options, which uh, they did highlight in the in, in their talks, and I think that that helped a lot in the sense that we could use those treatment options to really help patients because that, that that's what we stand for here at KDH and. Uh, I'd like to thank my mom and dad uh, for really giving me unconditional support really even sometimes we have differences in the opinion, uh, but they, they always support me unconditionally and give me a, a free hand to really do uh, what I believe in and what we believe in. So that's something that uh, I really appreciate a lot. And obviously the doctors here and, uh, and, and, and the staff here and everyone here else over the last six since the inception of this hospital have really taken to the next level. I think we have the best of the best here at, at KDH and I hope that we can still continue to improve. I mean there's always room for improvement all the time and we're going to be hopefully in the next few years at the forefront of the, the medical and the healthcare system in India and uh, uh, I think to go through what he has to and uh, I hope that this is an informative note for all of you guys and uh, it leads to new outcomes, new, new uh, ways of doing things really and really keeping up with the times and the new information and the new, uh, the new ways of doing things that, keep, that, that we adapt with the times. So, uh, I hope you keep adapting as things change and yeah, I'll leave to Dr. Nutha to take, take the rest from him. Yeah. <laughs> he can introduce himself, yeah. Thank you.
session. And I do agree with a lot of points that Dr. Asim has said. It is true that the pharma industry does control a lot of what medicine we follow, what medicines we take, and the treatment we are giving our patients. I am a pathologist, and therefore I get only the laboratory investigations. And they are also, whether they are all required or they are just put, is a question which the clinician has to answer. And I'm, unfortunately, I may have to just do all the tests. So I feel that the right thing or the right approach would be to treat, to teach the doctors at the MBBS, at the MD, and even further that what is called ethics and what is medicine. Today, unfortunately, what has happened is that it's a diagnostic based medicine. It's all dependent on the blood tests and the radiology and various other diagnostic parameters. And actually listening to the patient, finding out. In fact, if you ask the old doctors, my father was a doctor, and he said the patient gives you the clue as to what is wrong with him. This and examination, the stethoscope is only carried as an identification for the doctor. Very few people really use the stethoscope. And that is what when even I was studying, we were taught. So I feel that teaching the students the correctness of medicine, how it should be taken forward, what is correct is the right thing to be done. <clears throat> yes, policies, strict policies should be made. I don't think we should involve politicians because that's a different thing altogether. But people who are good um, educationalists and have very high ethical standards are for the persons who should be involved in putting these policies together. Along, and along with this, you, as was said very clearly, that you must have courage, no fear. And one must be able to say that this is not right, this is not correct. The, the pharma industry does tempt you in so many ways. It's really sad and we all fall for that temptation very often. But that's something that has to be taught, <clears throat> that this, what they are giving you, is not worth it at all. Thank you. My name is Dr. Varsha Vadeva. I am the head of Department of Pathology, Laboratory Medicine and Transfusion Medicine. So, you already put the root cause. Yes, yes. And I really feel we should improve the education system. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, what's your name? What you I am, I'm Dr. Kiran. I'm uh, consultant in the critical care division. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, Dr. what was your key takeaway from today's panel? So, it was an eye-opener for me, actually. I mean, we always do, get, I mean, it, especially in clinical branches, we are always sort of, uh, we keep going down in statistics, evidence-based medicine. But it's a good take on evidence-based. I mean, we actually sort of cut this evidence-based thing to shreds. Uh, I mean, it was, it was an eye-opener for me, to be honest. And uh, I've always been a great promoter of the vaccine, though I'm aware that there are, there of course, have been side effects with the vaccine, but to this scale and, with, and uh, uh, to know that, uh, I mean, behind the statistics lies, I mean, you need to read between the lines and you need to understand what really goes, yeah, goes on behind the scenes. So, so uh, I mean, brilliant lecture. I mean, he's a great orator, yes, but I mean, uh, uh, the points that he's raised are very valid points. And... People, especially who deal with patients day in, day out, are supposed to supposed to look at this perspective also. I mean, it's not just that side. We need to look at are we doing the right things? Are we really right in following these guidelines, these so-called guidelines which come in place? So, for me as a physician, for me as a person who looks at patients' bedside, I would rather stick to my clinical skills rather than just go by some data which is produced somewhere. And now, now when we have such prominent people coming out with these things, it, it sort of, it, you feel vindicated that, yes, there are certain times where you feel that on a clinical basis, I'm doing the right thing, but the statistics suggest otherwise. Now you feel vindicated. You feel, yes, probably we're right all along. And uh, there are other people who, who have access to such information who are coming out with this now. Uh, 
Are there any other challenges you feel like the healthcare system is facing right now? See, in terms of challenges, obviously, I mean, in a country like India, we have challenges which are quite different from the rest of the, I mean, from the rest of the developed world. I am sure, but but uh, in terms of data, in terms of uh, in terms of the topic that was sort of what, what was discussed today, in terms of how much do we believe this data there, okay? and then do we need to have our own set of uh, uh, data, own set of guidelines, uh, and and. Probably, and is is there a difference between data from clinicians versus data between from researchers? Researchers are not the ones who are seeing the patient's website. So for for someone like like me who is a clinician, I would want more data from people who are who are working bedside, who are looking at patients, and then giving the feedback rather than just having uh, uh, just having data which which probably is not really valid. I mean, for whatever we discussed today. So one thing that was shared is that have you seen any thing with like. We did see a lot of lot of not only heart attacks, strokes, others. I mean, basically vascular events. Vas all vascular events. Uh, uh, we did. In fact, in fact, the vascular surgeon here was reporting an extremely high incidence of limb ischemia. Okay, so so uh, this definitely was there. But how much of it was as we, as as Dr. Azim just put out? How much of it, this was severe COVID? How much actually was it vaccine related? I mean, I don't think anyone has worked on that. And the, the assumption was that this is all COVID-related, and it was a manifestation. It was, an, uh, it was a, a, a extra pulmonary manifestation of COVID. But it's quite possible that it could be vaccine-related as well. Do you, do you possibly see the vaccine that the government heard? Very difficult to say. I mean, see, I would reserve judgment on that. I mean, I, I'm not really endorsing everything that we said, obviously, because uh, uh, I mean. If you were to say that the vaccines didn't work, then how did we control the pandemic? And we need to answer certain questions on the other side as well. But natural immunity, infection, how much? How much? But see, I mean, of course, you can have all the data. We said that probably transmission did not go down, but in the end, we did control the pandemic. We 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 sort sort of sort of um, tidied the crisis in the sense. So, what worked then? What worked then? We need to have some answers on that front as well. So I'm I'm not I'm not completely saying that. Uh, vaccines didn't work, but at the same time, it's good to have a debate. Yeah, but really, there's, there's, there's no scope for healthy debate like on media. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's why this was such a good platform because then you could actually speak out and you could you could get such stuff stuff out, or you could you, you could you could present such um, uh, such data, where, and you could actually sort of point out the flaws in the study. So, excellent platform to uh, I I completely believe there's 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 lot of room for a healthy debate. And we need to sort of discuss more about this so that we don't do we don't end up doing harm in the future. I mean, as Dr. Tanu at the end of the lecture said, what do we do for the next pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Thank, much. You. Thank you. What's your name and uh, what do you do? So I'm Dr. Gaurav Mehta. I'm a consultant here in gastroenterology and hepatology. I've been here for the last eight years. We mostly liver disease and liver transplant patients. Great. So how was the event? It was great. It was an eye opener. But you know, we knew this kind of Data existed. I think nobody speaks about it, but you know, the more and more we see, the more we know. So I think hearing this is a sort of gives me some confidence that what I've been thinking about complication my patients probably is true. Right. Yeah. Any specific Yeah, I mean, we know that pharma industry is a problem. You know that exists all over. You know, having trained in uh, you know, United States for about 15 years. And towards the end of my training, there was a big pushback uh, against the pharma industry and things were sort of getting better. But you know what I hear now from the data from UK that it's probably not true. It's still a lot of it is pharma driven. A lot of our data comes from pharma driven uh, sponsorship. And we really have to take everything with a pinch of salt when you look at, you know, data, study, publications, how we present, how we treat our patients based on, you know, handful papers. We really need to be skeptical about it. So I think it, it sort of will make us open our eyes more and see things even uh, in a different perspective right now. What did you feel like for some solutions or some key conversations that you could have going forward to like add this from like you know less than a worse like I think a lot of it has to come from the government. I think there has to be more tight regulation. Uh, I think you need more regulation. There's very less regulation in the pharma industry. Right. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of the owners to sort of regulate the pharma industry is pushed on to doctors as to our interactions with them, which is very, very less. And I think the government has to do more in terms of regulating this industry, which I feel is not well regulated. Right, right. 
Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, but that's the that's the whole key point. The whole talk was about conflict of interest, you know, and uh, doctors sort of get pushed into this who are not really involved much in this industry, and we rely on our data, and there is not enough funding for our research that we want to do, and we sort of get funding from pharma, and then it sort of becomes a battle for us. Like there was some new share about like Rashida Bhai, Rajiv Bhai's heart attacks, even if uh, India would have had those heart attacks, maybe that's what the things. Do you feel like this new vaccination would have had any to do with it? Well, yeah, surely the data will keep coming as, you know, the years go along, but I have very little doubt in my mind that there is something amiss over here. Because we have seen a lot of patients, young patients having coronary events, not only heart disease, so I do mostly gastroenterology and liver disease, and I have seen like a flare of patients having liver disorders, GI disorders, which are all autoimmune diseases where your body's immunity has changed and you start attacking your own body, same as a heart attack. Like there is a change in immunity and the vessels in the blood of your heart are sort of attacked and you get a heart attack. The same way it's happening in the liver, in the GI tract and a lot of personal experience with that too. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you take some responsibility as to why it's happening. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. yeah, hi, I'm Dr. Leroy Rebello and uh, I'm a functional medicine doctor uh, practicing in India and uh, I'm also an activist and I'm really happy that these kind of things have come out, especially in the mainstream medical field. Being a mainstream medical doctor for many years, I was in the system, now I've come out of the system and I'm looking at the system with a bird's eye view and I've seen a lot of these things happening. But especially after COVID, what we've seen is really mind-boggling where you actually see uh, what you read about in so-called science fiction actually coming into reality and coming into the real world where people are being victimized, you know, for no fault of theirs. And it's just for the sake of profits and sake of driving the stock market up or driving share capital up people are losing, actually losing their lives. And I'm not saying this is done with every pharma company. I'm not saying this is done with every, you know, thing or every doctor is bad or every hospital is bad. But definitely there are sides, two sides of the coin. And I'm really happy that, you know, these things are being brought out and people are giving, are being given the right to choose. The right of people to have to choose their medicine, to choose their health, is being taken away in what we've seen. And I really want that right not to be taken away. People should be given the right to choose what medicines they want, to choose what goes inside your body, because you are not a slave anymore. You have, you know, definitely the right. See, the main solution basically is education. If people are educated in the right way and people understand what they are getting into, then I feel this education can solve all the problems. So, everyone has his own responsibility to educate himself. The system is made by us, we are the people. Unless we take responsibility and change the system, we can't just blame the system. We are the people who make the system. So every human being, everybody watching this should understand his health because your health is your responsibility, not the responsibility of a government, not the responsibility of a doctor, not the responsibility of anybody around you. It's your responsibility, it's your body. You should understand how it works and you should take you know, steps or you should take the right things, what you want to take and no one should force things upon you. That's what I feel and I'm really happy these things are coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Dr. Falguni Gaitonde here. I'm a homeopath by profession and always interested in how to have patients healthy without using medicine. And that's how I got into the foray of nutrition and ozone therapy. So that's what I'm practicing. You can call me a kind of functioning medicine where I'm using ozone, homeopathy and wellness practices or nutritional practices to help patients come back to health as an adjuvant therapy. Oh great. So uh, Dr. what was your key takeaway from that? 
great great gratitude to KDH to organize this event. Thanks to Anmol and Keisha for inviting me over, and uh, Dr. Asim Malhotra has covered everything in a very crisp manner, and it resonates with me. My thought process. Okay, I have not been courageous enough to not take the vaccine. However, uh, we follow a lot of oxygenation protocols to prevent the side effects of vaccines. Right. Uh, and uh, what do you feel like? Uh, what do you feel like is the current problem that we're facing with the healthcare system and with your patients for that matter? Yeah, like a uh, few other doctors before me spoke, awareness and education. And today everything is available, the pros and the cons of every system of medicine, every protocol which the doctor is advocating. And if the patient is equipped with both sides of the treatment protocol or knowledge, that will make a huge difference in how fast and uh, effective their recovery will be or how they can prevent so many illnesses. So we're seeing the, we're actually seeing the, like a lot of other plans right now. So what do you feel like is the reason behind it? Uh, can you repeat your question? I'm saying that we're seeing the surge other plans right now. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of other plans right now. So, do you feel, what do you feel is the situation with that? So, I would say the Indian lifestyle has dramatically changed in the last 20 years. It's become very Americanized and we are just eating them. So, that is allowing us to get more prone towards heart attacks and cardiovascular conditions, sedentary lifestyle. And I would attribute uh, vaccines to about 50 to 60 percent of the surge in events. Yeah. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Anmol and Misha, what, how do you feel about the event that just took place? Uh, I think the event went really well. Right. Uh, I think it was a very much needed event for right now with all the news that's going around in the world. And I think it's pushed the doctors to take one step forward, at least in, in their thinking in what's going on and, and right. analyzing the situation around the world right now and getting the politics angle into it, the financial angle into it. I think that gives them a better perspective and holistic perspective about uh, the issues that we're facing in the healthcare and medical system. Because it's all conflated with politics and you know, exactly. social causes and everything mixed together. So I think it it, it it put them it put it in context for them, which I think was the most important thing. And what is your main motive of getting like Dr. C. Manotra here? Like, I think doctors, talk, a proper doctor, a proper cardiologist, talking, talking to, to doctors would really make an impact. And he's, you know, he's made an impact across the world. I think hearing from someone in the fraternity who speaks their language, I think that was something that Anmol and I were really sure about, that if we were going to bring someone to speak uh, at KDH, then it should be someone who has the relevant experience and expertise that would really strike a chord in the audience's heart. So I think that was why we really felt like Dr. Asim Malhotra would be the best person to, yeah. to have here. What do you feel like the healthcare system is lacking and what, what do you feel like there could be more of like considering today's population? So honestly, I don't come from a healthcare uh, background, but as a citizen and as a human being, obviously we all access healthcare. Um, I think the things that are lacking in healthcare are similar to what's lacking in pretty much every area or sector uh, that surrounds us, which is more critical thinking, more open discussion and debate, uh, less censorship. I think transparency and trust accountability is something that we've seen the trust just collapse right over the last years and especially in the last three years. Mm. So I think that is something that needs to be regained by uh, honest intentional work by the medical fraternity. So I think a so, grounding in values, I think that's what, what's really missing, you know, to remember ethics and ethical based uh, medicine. So remembering the value system that forms the foundation of society and of life on this beautiful planet. So last question, like personally, like what does this conversation mean to you guys? Like, you know, it's a bit like I think you are pretty vocal that you've been doing events and like, you know, talking online. So like, overall, like, what do you feel about this conversation? How's it been to you guys? I mean, I think it was. Like at the end of the day, no one's really here. Like we were not here to prove a point or anything like that. I think it's really out of concern mm -hmm. for the the people of, of the world of India. Mm -hmm. And I think this this takes a step forward in 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 making people aware of the problems that we're facing. Right. And uh, hopefully it, it brings some kind of small change. Even a small change in one person makes a big difference. So hopefully it starts bringing small changes in people, which we can then. Uh, which will create impact for sure. And I think this 
I mean, hosting these events and these discussions is something very close to both Anmol and my heart. Um, like Anmol said, it's not to prove a point and definitely not to create more discord and disharmony. In fact, the intention is exactly the opposite. It's to help bring people together so that we can build more resilient and robust solutions that can propel us all forward into a more uh, harmonious future where we can use people's skills, passion, intelligence, and also the best of technology to reach a new level, um, which I think is right around the corner. So I'm really excited that this event happens. Yeah, I think if there's no, like, you know, there has to be difference of opinion, only then growth comes. Yeah. Only in, like, uncomfortable situations can you really grow, right? So... Yeah, you don't want echo chambers. Yeah, you don't want echo chambers. And I think a lot of med medical fraternity was an echo chamber. Uh, and I think this would really open the debate, open the floor up for many more people to start questioning things. And I also and think to stop this, uh, this cancel culture that's going on, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. if you speak or you say something that's, you know, uh, considered controversial or fringe or just not what the primary or mainstream narrative is, that that's, that means that you should be disallowed and no one should mm -hmm. talk to you. So I think I was really, really happy that in this room we had the support of everyone in the audience saying whether or not they agree or disagree is not the point. The point was, yes, let's have more discussions like this, let's have more debates, because unless you can hear everyone speak, you won't even know whether you agree or disagree with them. So I think that was, uh, that's probably sure. a big takeaway. So I mean, you all are like uh, some of the very few uh, young prominent people who are like critically thinking. So how do we encourage like more people to, you know, just kind of be a part of this conversation or like think more critically or be open to these ideas of like there are deeper truths or, you know, deeper things going. I think creating safe spaces is really important. I'm a strong believer in building community and, uh, and having physical events and gatherings where people can come together. So I think uh, safety, where people feel comfortable and safe, where they know they're not going to be attacked uh, and blamed. So creating a culture which stems from the leadership or from whoever's heading that initiative to say this is the this is the culture and this is the way we're going to come together and, and we want to encourage uh, you know debate and questioning and and that in a friendly and uplifting manner rather than in an attacking and you know pointing fingers. Yeah, no, I think like at the end of the day, people need to start speaking their truth and how do you get them to do that? Really is to make them aware of the information first mm. and then you know if something happens in, like personally to you is when most people like they, they go through and experience themselves is when they will so I think the more we do and the more we send those vibrations and those uh, messages out into the universe I think mm. it, it rebounds and then it starts starts helping the rest of humanity's consciousness <coughs> rise and that's essentially what we need we need people to take conscious decisions of what they're doing a lot of the stuff was unconscious right so True. i mean if people start really knowing what they're doing i think that that's a big big uh, change that then will 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 ripple throughout the whole world yeah and i think uh, that's something that dr Singh said on stage you know about I was wrong, I made a mistake, and, mm. and I'm here to That's move key. forward. Yeah. I think having the humility yeah. Yeah. Uh, to admit when maybe you thought something and you've changed your mind, I think that setting that example yeah. is probably critical in helping other people to say, okay, I'm human as well, and it's okay to change your mind and to say that you've evolved. Yeah. So, right. yeah, showing more examples of that. Absolutely. Thank you guys for putting this together, and thank you okay. for using your influence in the right way. Uh, cool. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you.